Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. You know, it's almost 100 degrees out here, so I thought I'd stop and have me an afternoon cup of coffee out here in the heat because I'm weird like that. Uh, I like my afternoon coffee. I don't know what to tell you. Well, um, yeah, this bricks thing, I think it could end up being a pretty major deal. I, I mean, I'm not making predictions, and I know that there's several naysayers out there saying, oh, you know, China will never, ever be able to topple the United States when it comes to economy and currency. They're still behind us. You know, they have problems too. You know, they're, they're different. I, I get all those arguments. But when you look at trajectory, when you look at how rapidly these countries in BRICS are growing and expanding in size, versus how the West is either stagnant or even regressing in size when it comes to the economy. Um, it's just a matter of time, folks. You just, you know, you, you can't expect it, you, no matter how much love and pride that you have for the United States, that's not going to keep it the powerhouse forever. You can't have the policies that we've enacted since 1971 in this country and just expect that it will always be the top dog. It's just not gonna happen, all right? I hate to burst the bubble. 80% um, of the world's market in oil, not 80% of the total oil, 80% of the market of oil is now controlled by BRICS, or will be come January 1st. Um, out of the top nine oil producing countries, seven of them are BRICS. Now, why that's important, just like I said this morning, because BRICS have agreed to do um, trade amongst their group in currencies other than the dollar. In fact, they've been very open the last couple of days about completely turning away from the dollar. They don't wanna have nothing to do with it. And that is not a good deal. You, you know, for those of you that may be kind of new to this game, I want to re refresh your memory or, or to kind of educate you on something. It wasn't but 20 years ago and multiple times before that, that any nation that even hinted at potentially going off the dollar, especially if they were an oil nation, uh, well, we took care of them. We either waged a war against them or we assassinated their president or we caused a revolution. Uh, you can say that I'm crazy and I'm wrong, but if you do your true history research, you'll find out that that's very accurate. Now we have multiple major, major players when it comes to oil, natural resources, manufacturing products, all this, just thumbing their nose at the United States and the US dollar. That alone does not show how weak we are. I don't know what to tell you. It, you, it can't keep going and, and just expect that it's okay. Shifting gears to another topic, um, but also on this morning's video, if you didn't watch it, uh, you probably should, but if you did, there seems to be some misunderstanding with some people uh, on what my point was in the video. And I have to clarify this because I think this is very important. Um, most, I think, got it based on the, the, the comments, but I got some emails and comments and stuff. And I think some people were thinking that I was implying that you don't need to get training or that you don't need to train at all to survive or to fight or, or whatever. That's absolutely not true. My point was is that I have seen at times these, these rumors or these things being said that only the people that are professionally trained have a real chance of surviving. That if you're going to go off and, and form a group and fight the bad guys, that if you're not some, you know, highly skilled, super high speed, very well equipped unit that comes from a long lineage of GI training, then you're just going to fail. That's not true at all. History shows that that's not true. In fact, in most cases, it's the opposite. There's a lot of history showing that uh, just the simple farmer defending their homes typically has a much greater advantage over a standing, trained, and highly equipped military. If you don't know, uh, you should look up the Battle of Carthage in Carthage, Missouri, not, not over in, in Europe. The Battle of Carthage uh, was early, happened early on in the war between the states here in the state of Missouri. You should do some history on that one because it proves my point. But the, what I'm trying to say is, is that 
you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a professional. You don't have to, to be a know-it-all to survive, to grow food, to, to take care of a homestead, to, to defend yourself. You should be training. If you can get professional training, I would highly advise that. Eat, whether it's guns, gardening, animals, building a house, whatever. And if you can't get the professional training, there's also online that you can get. And if you can't even do that for whatever reason, that doesn't make sense right now to me, but if you can't do that or won't, you should at least be going out and doing it yourself. You should be training, you should be practicing. In fact, not to knock people, but uh, I've seen it many times and I've been told from other people that, that do professional training, that a lot of times it's the ones that did receive professional training think that that's just enough. You know, they got it, their professional training because of their service or whatever it was 10, 20 years ago, and they never need to do it again. That's not true. We should always be honing our skills. My point, though, again, was is you don't have to be a professional to be proficient enough to get the job done. That even those 65-year-old grandmas out there can learn how to do things and do it quite well if they have the determination, the grit, the heart, and push forward. Now, last thing, I'm all over the board today, just all over the board. I have had a, a very busy day, but actually kind of fun. I've had four, I think, phone conversations with people uh, for various different things. I'm not going to go into those details, but they were, they were really good, some good stuff. So it's just, I don't know. Maybe I've had too many of these today. This is this is only the third one. That's not very much, uh, at least for me. Anyways, um, for the rest of this video, what I'm about to say is uh, unconfirmed. I can't confirm it, okay? There's been speculation of it on online for the last several days. Uh, I have personally received from information, and I cannot confirm what I'm about to say other than it came from personal sources that I know and trust, but who knows? Um, I think we are going to start seeing in the next, based on, because just about every source I've seen talk about this, the, the dates are kind of different. So I would say probably in the next four to six weeks, maybe four to eight week time period, I, I would say within four weeks from now through to the next four weeks. Does that make sense? So starting about the middle of September through, you know, October. Uh, we we could most likely or very likely start to see some restrictions being put back upon us, some some form of lockdown or control. Uh, this uh, it may start off on just airplane travel that you're required to have it on airplane travel. That's that's one of the 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 intel that I received that the, the they're expecting to first implement it on air travel. We're already seeing uh, colleges re-implement it for the upcoming year. Um, I saw one school in Kentucky. They had only been in, in, in uh, class and session for two weeks because school's just starting for the you know, indoctrination centers around the country. But uh, they'd only been in school for two weeks, and they already shut it down and kicked the, you know, sent the kids home because of so many illnesses. Um, there's been celebrities and stuff pushing it. We need to start doing this again. And, and so far, everything that I've seen has been suggestions strongly worded, but not required. Uh, but we're, we're most likely gonna, gonna start seeing it happen on, on air travel. And then from there, it will probably just be a progression, a progression from there to where we get to a point, and I don't know the timeline, but probably we'll get to a point that it will be at least as bad as it was before when I when speaking of restrictions and possibly worse you have to realize that what happened three years ago was really a beta test I remember I cannot remember the name so please don't ask um, I think it was uh, Glenn Beck but I, I could even be wrong on that but he had a guest on whoever it was it was a podcast and they had a guest on this was very early on in the whole lockdown i don't even think the thing had even come out yet it may have but i'm not sure uh and this person was the the director of some national organization on medical health or something and she was saying that she believed fully that what we would start to see three years ago was going to just be a beta test that yes there's a serious thing going around 
but they have all these plans in place and, and they were gonna be setting it up and it was gonna be a beta test. Some things would work, some things wouldn't. They would be able to hash it out and, and, and over the next few years, kind of work out the infrastructure and the bugs. And then at some point in the future, it was gonna happen again. I'm not 100% saying that this season, this coming fall is that happening again, but it is starting to look like that. We're starting to see speculation and rumors and whispers and some kind of evidence, circumstantial, I guess you could say, uh, indicating that uh, we could be in for some kind of lockdown. I've also uh, heard from sources that the plan is, is that it's, it's going to end up being a permanent one to a certain extent. Think of, of China, like in China, you, they, they, wear, they wear face diapers all the time there. That, that's just the norm and that they're they're going to push for that being the norm that it's not going to be this okay it's over now now we can just go back to normal they're, this time around they're going to push some of these policies as becoming just standard i know a lot of you're going to say yeah there's got not going to be a whole lot of people that follow it this time you know there's they they, they burned their bridges last time there's going to be way too many people that are resisted there there will there'll be some people that resist it like there was last time but I'm sure they have things in place to compel people to comply. And uh, they're really good with their psychological operating. And, uh, you know, there could be some explosive, you know, numbers that it looks like it actually is more dangerous than three years ago. And then it would certainly pull people into panic. Because if it's just like it was a year ago, the last time or so we were you know talking about it people like oh it was just a cold and sniffles and it's fine but if all of a sudden it comes out that the cases are extremely severe uh you could certainly start seeing people say you know what i didn't want to do this but this looks really dangerous this time maybe we should again i'm speculating and i'm telling you things that's second and third hand information coming from good sources but still i can't verify any of it all I'm saying is, is that you should probably be prepared for this. Think about three years ago, if you had listened to folks like myself, and there were a few others, not really very many, there were several prepper channels three years ago that's like, oh, don't worry about it, nothing's going to happen, just ignore it, blah, blah, blah. Um, if, you had, if you had listened to that advice three years ago, some of you did, not everyone did, how would have things turned out for you? Would, have, would it have been better for you if you'd kind of taken some time to prepare we also have to understand that, that we're going into it, this at a different time period where the economy is already extremely weak. We've got war going on and, and rumors of more wars and, and, a, and a stronger and more fervent push for climate lockdowns and change. So we could see stuff happen a lot worse. And, and that, that's all I'm saying. This isn't doomsday. This, I'm not trying to terrify you or anything. I'm just telling you that these are possibilities and I think they're becoming stronger and stronger as the days pass. So we should be smart and get prepared. We should get re ourselves ready for this because it looks like it could happen um, within weeks from now, at least some level of it. And then we don't know from that point, once, once, once it's out of the bag, you know, it's, it's, it's just going to expand. You, you can't give government an inch and expect them to stay at an inch. They're going to just keep going and going. They'll take, take miles and miles from you. So you need to be getting your houses in order and preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.